people have now been confirmed dead as rioting moves across the UK. Prime Minister David Cameron vowed to end the violence that was sparked after police shot a man dead in Tottenham, North London. Let's discuss the situation with Richard Seymour, who's a British writer and an activist, joining us on the line from London tonight. Mr Seymour, very good evening. The UK Prime Minister says the fight back is underway. Why did it take so long, though, to employ these tougher measures? I think because, uh, for a start, the political leadership uh, was in a bit of disarray. David Cameron was on holiday. The Metropolitan Police is in serious crisis over the whole Hackgate scandal. That's taken out a large chunk of its leadership. And there's a lot of competition going on for who's going to uh, take over those roles. Um, and in addition to that, the Metropolitan Police has spent a generation trying to repair some of the uh, damage done to relations with black communities in this country. The last thing they need now is to uh, fritter all of, the, all of that work away. Um, one of the real problems they're facing here is that the unit that killed Mark Duggan uh, was a unit belonging to Operation Trident. That was supposed to be a unit that was uh, set up on the initiative of the black community. Um, it now seems to be one that's uh, entering a serious crisis. Well, you know, you're saying that the police, yes, have come in for serious criticism over the shooting of that man. Some saying this is what triggered the riots. Of course, his family really want to distance himself from that. Uh, yeah. But also a lot of uh, a criticism of the way the police has reacted to what's happened here and the information they've given out. Do you think they could have handled it better? Um, I think it was re really difficult for them to have handled it better, partly because I think the... Uh, truth is that the police uh, significantly caused this situation, as you said, um, but uh, and therefore don't necessarily have uh, an easy solution to it. I mean, if you look at the way in which it spread, it spread to uh, hitherto untouched areas, uh, areas where I, I live and areas where I've used to live, um, have seen uh, rioting on a scale that we haven't seen since the 1980s. Um, the police probably couldn't have uh, anticipated that, um, and. Therefore, it's not really within their gift to prevent it. I think a deeper solution is called for. Those who are calling for um, militaristic solutions, policing solutions, I think are missing the real source of the problem. Uh, Richard, as night falls across London, across the rest of uh, Britain tonight, uh, police have been given the go-ahead to use water cannon and plastic bullets if they need to yeah. to stop any riots. Will that work? Is it a way forward? No, because I think that uh, what's going to happen is you're going to potentially intimidate uh, and injure a few people out of participating in riots, but you're going to leave the terrain uh, pretty well prepared for future riots because the resentment, uh, the anger, the alienation will still be there. And by the way, uh, in this country, supposedly, uh, we have policing by consent. Now, that's... I mean, that's necessary, as these riots have demonstrated, that you couldn't have enough police to just rule purely by force. Now, if you start introducing plastic bullets and water cannons, which is something that Britain only traditionally uses in the colonial frontiers uh, historically, um, then you basically erode the consent upon which policing is based. So I think it's a short-sighted measure. It's a panic measure. Um, it's one being done because of the lack of a political leadership in this country. It's a, one in perpetual crisis. One of the most shocking um, parts of what's happened over the last couple of days as well, I guess, is seeing how young the people appear to have been taking part in this, some as young as nine yeah. or ten taking part in this looting. What does it tell us about the states, uh, the current state of English society? I say English as well because notably there's been nothing so far at least happening like this in Wales and Scotland. True, and uh, nothing in Northern Ireland where I come from either. Look, um, the truth is that um, young people are getting the worst of this recession but 20% uh, youth unemployment. Um, they're getting some of the worst of the cuts. Um, education maintenance allowance has been cut for them. Tuition fees have gone up. Opportunities for them are being frittered away, and they see it and they feel it. Now, young kids may not be politically articulate. That doesn't mean they're not aware of this general situation that they're in. And I have a feeling that they think that there's nothing in it for them, and therefore very little to lose. Um, so I think that's going to be one of the reasons, at least, why people so young have been involved. OK, uh, thanks for your thoughts. British writer and activist Richard Seymour on RT International tonight.